I would say the number one thing for everyone is electrolytes and or salt, whether that's coming from tablets like noon or from food, from salty foods, you definitely need to manage your salt intake and not just do water. <laughs> Does this have salt in it? <laughs> Welcome all you Canyon Brats out there. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. This is episode number four, Running in the Canyon. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah, I'm excited for this episode. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Running's my very favorite activity, and the canyon is my very favorite place. Well, there you go. <laughs> Combine the two and you got your two favorites. Nice. Yeah, episode number four. Uh, this uh, we got in our hands. Well, I have in my hand, and now you, now you have in your hand, our beers for today. And <laughs> and then so these Canyon beers are brought to us by we've got two people that bought us uh, Canyon beers for this episode. Sweet. Oh, we've and got... those two people are uh, <laughs> on behalf of the Northern Arizona Museum. Shout out, you're great. <laughs> Thanks, Greg, for the beer. <laughs> yes, Greg Coglin uh, sent us uh, a couple bucks for candy beers, and his shout out, he wanted to go to the <laughs> yeah the Museum of Northern Arizona. Um, that's beautifully random. Um, oh, no whoa, good there. thing there's no beer there. I almost spilled you there. Uh, and our second beer, uh, someone else who donated for the shout out, uh, Andy. And uh, he wanted his shout out to be about In A Day, which was a little thing that me and him were doing um, back in the day where we do some 24 hour micro adventure. And we did one in the canyon. Uh, half of it was in the canyon and the other half was summiting Humphreys. And we did that in a day. And so, yeah, that's actually, I think I'm gonna post that up as an episode. I don't think, I am. I'm gonna post that up as an episode for for Candy Brats, because it, it was just really cool, really fun audio. Yeah, you guys need to do another one. You're slacking. I know. Andy. We've only done two in a days, and it's been like three <laughs> years. <laughs> that last one kind of tanked me a little bit. <laughs> do I want to do that one? It sounds awesome. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Sounds like it, right? Like I you, like Sufferfest, so. Uh, if you want to walk the entirety of Oak Creek Canyon from Pump House Wash all the way to the town, um, yeah, go for it. 18 miles it ended up being. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you to Greg, thank you to Andy for buying us some Canyon beers. And if you're listening out there and you'd like to participate, get us some Canyon beers. And, and in all honesty, it can go towards our beers that we're drinking for the episode, but also uh, for us to up our game, to maybe help towards getting some better audio. Uh, no audio is gonna help my voice right now. <laughs> um, but uh, getting yeah some some more equipment, um, you know the the podcast servers do cost something, so it's just and plus it's just fun. Um, yeah, nice little group of people who are super enthusiastic about the canyon. Um, grab us a beer. Uh, in order to do that, you can do two ways. You can either Venmo or PayPal. If you Venmo, it's Nick Dash Irvin eight, the number eight, for Venmo. And then PayPal, if you do it that way, it's actually, um, it's an actual PayPal, paypal.me slash Canyon Brats. And that'll take you to that. And, you know, just throw a dollar, I don't know, two dollars. I didn't uh, realize people still use PayPal. Oh, yeah? Um, is, that, is that my generation more? <laughs> so. PayPal? Well, giving them options. So <laughs> Venmo, Venmo or PayPal. All right. Woohoo! What are you drinking over there? It's not a big surprise. Yeah, I know. I need to switch it up. I think I had this on the last podcast, too. Good old Sierra Nevada hazy little thing IPA. Yeah, I mean, it's a good one. There's a reason. Nice. Look at that pour. Good. Well, you guys can't see the pour. And, uh, I'm right. learning. Yeah, you're doing well. And now hit it hard. I got Boom. <laughs> yeah, oh, crud. Oh, no. You're going to have to sip that. Oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, good foam gulp there. It wasn't that bad. No. Uh, and I'm drinking a local brew from Lumberyard. I'm just on the other side of the tracks. Lumberyard Brewing Company, their Flagstaff IPA. 
It's gone through a couple different name changes, but always has been one of my favorite IPAs. It was my first um, Flagstaff beer love when I moved back mm. here again. Was there? Uh, yeah, it was called Lumberyard IPA back Can I then. Try it. Uh, yeah, it's oh, it's a West like Coast it. IPA for sure. I mean, you might like it. I don't know. Your palate might change a little. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's more than okay. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into it. Running in the Canyon. Yeah, Running in the Canyon, episode number four. Cool. So, I'm Nick Irvin, by the way. I'm Carrie Henderson. Yes. And I just kind of <laughs> wanted to do that introduction just to re remind people of who your Canyon Brats are. I mean, you guys are Canyon Brats out there. But Carrie is definitely the the expert on this definitely the more qualified to talk about running in the canyon i've run in the canyon for sure but you on the other hand like you said running is your favorite activity the canyon's your favorite place so it's a match made in heaven for mm-hmm. you it is i would not call myself an expert mm. um but yeah i have a few big canyon runs under my belt yeah that's where you keep them yeah. yeah. I've never oh. seen you wear a belt, I don't think. <laughs> I just found two belts today in my suitcase. Oh, nice. <laughs> Riveting podcast <laughs> content there. <laughs> I was excited. Yeah. Uh, you're probably digging with your suitcase because it's close to Thanksgiving and you're going back to Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, to visit f- family. Well, I don't know yep. why I struggled <laughs> on that word. F- 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 no big canyons there, but there will be some running and some hiking. Running? Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister Anna and I are doing a turkey trot. First turkey trot for both of us ever. Really? We have matching turkey hats. <laughs> <laughs> a picture will be posted oh, on yeah. the uh, show notes or on the website. We're going to get first and second place. We're going to finish holding hands. Aww. Okay, I can't guarantee that's going to happen. I but... think there might be some competition in there that might not allow that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just guessing. We'll see. So you're going to hold hands like uh, Jason Schlarb and Killian Journey did at Hard Rock couple years ago sure finish first <laughs> nice a little running a little fan so that's cool yeah it's it's near the holidays um yeah has, is anyone else out there if you've done a turkey trot what are your favorite turkey trots what's a good one we should try maybe somewhere in arizona i don't want to go all the way to chicago <clears throat> to do a turkey trot oh maybe next year it's a family thing but um yeah there's one in sedona yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's all i know oh great <laughs> so maybe the one in sedona is it the first one that they've done? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Again, <laughs> riveting. <laughs> so, all right. Um, yeah, I got a little raspy voice. Uh, I had a cold about two weeks ago. Still kind of messing my, my voice up, but hopefully I sound okay. All right, ready to get into it? Yep. Let's ready. get into it. Yeah, we should have gotten into it a little while ago. All right, so the first thing I wanted to kind of, I don't know, talk about the basics. Um, like when people go to Grand Canyon, they either, usually they either are there on the rim, they go to the viewpoints and they look out over the grandeur and are inspired and all that and take their photos. Um, Or there's 1% of visitors that go down below the rim so they'll do hikes. Uh, Either that's a day hike, say down and up to like Skeleton Point or Indian Garden, something like that. Or they'll go on multi-day hikes, backpack the canyon. But there is a, I would, I would, call it a small niche of people that actually do more than just hiking and actually run in the canyon. And I think most people that would listen to this, or not that would listen to this, but most people that you would say that to, their question would be, why? Why? <laughs> the, I know my, my dad would be like, what? Why? <laughs> you know there's mules or like you can like walk. So I want to ask you, like, why run in the canyon? Yeah. Um, well, for me... I think running in itself is a a challenge. Like I always want to challenge myself um, more and more. So, you know, I've run nine marathons, a ton of half marathons. So it's increasing those distances over the years. Um, And when I moved to Arizona um, and started hiking in the canyon, um, you know, hiking down to the river and up um, as fast as I could, the next logical step, I guess, or maybe illogical to some people, was running rim to rim to rim. Um, and really just to see if I could do it and to see if I could do it fast. 
I'm, you know, fast for me, (laughs) not fast for Jim Walmsley or something, but yeah, it was just the challenge and, um, it's just a big undertaking. The Canyon's huge. And just when you're standing on the South Rim, looking at the North Rim, thinking to yourself, like, I'm about to get all the way over there and then come all the way back. Um, and it's that like moment of commitment when you're at the top of the North Rim. Um, that's pretty doable for a lot of distance runners, just that 21 miles whatever it is to get over to the North Rim, it's that turning around and realizing you have to do it all over again. Um, it's just a, a mental strength test, physical strength test. So, yeah. So the challenge. Yep. Always yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Do you ever feel like, <clears throat> like that challenge is, I don't know, well, I guess we'll talk about maybe hard times of running, but I was going to say, is that challenge ever enough to stop you on on sometimes have you ever turned around basically and not completed what you had planned no I really don't oh. think so <laughs> well, <all right laughs> I'm trying then. to think of a time um, that I didn't do what I set out to do and I really I honestly can't think of one hmm. I think normally when I say something out loud um, like I'm gonna go run tr- rim to rim to rim today or I'm gonna run rim to rim to rim in under 13 hours or whatever the goal is once I put out in the universe I feel like I have to stay committed to it (laughs) no matter who heard me. Um, Yeah, so I mean, luckily I haven't had to turn around and abandon the plan yet. That's not to say it won't happen. You know, things happen down there. You can sprain an ankle, you can um, get a hole in your bladder and run out of water, like a ton of, there are a lot of variables that could stop you from completing something, but luckily knock on wood hasn't happened to me yet. Yeah, there's a ton of variables in the canyon. Yeah. Way more, I think, than any other pl- Well, in a lot of other places. Yeah, and I've been um, pretty responsible about my hydration when running in the canyon. Um, and I've never gotten super dehydrated. I've never gotten sick to my stomach. So those are, I think, some of the issues that a lot of runners deal with um, when doing those big jaunts. So Yeah, let's say that. We'll talk about that yeah. in a little bit um, and really dig in. A lot deeper to some of the the issues and special things that you need to take into consideration. Yeah. Um. Cool. So, uh, I mean, like I said, you're maybe you wouldn't call yourself an expert, but out of the two of us, you're definitely the the most you know experted. Uh, <laughs> new way of saying it, kids. Uh, experted person here. So, I mean, saying why I run in the canyon is is not you know going to be as cool. So, uh, for me, running in the canyon is very few and far between. I'm mostly doing more like hikes kind of thing and and off trail stuff, but I have definitely done my my share of runs. Uh, They've been pretty limited to certain areas that we'll talk about later. But for me, it is kind of the the challenge. I don't think I've really challenged myself in a run in the canyon. I've never put myself in a position like you said where you like get a certain spot and have to come all the way back and that's you know that's something I'm not happy to say that I haven't really challenged myself in the canyon Um, but for me it's more just just the experience of being in there and I think running brings a different a different um, well definitely brings a different physical aspect and because of that it brings a different mental aspect for me uh, a lot of people say, well, you're missing all this if you're running, you know, why are you running? You're missing so much. You got to take it slow. And there's something to be said about that if it is a like a new area to you and you want to really experience it. Like uh, what's his name? Craig Childs. Craig Childs said he takes longer than anyone. He'll take like <laughs> two days to go five miles. Yeah. Um, but for for the things you've done before, like that feeling, what I'm getting at is basically that this feeling of not, people call it a runner's high, but I don't know, like runner's high to me. It's more like it clears out. You get the, the, the different hormones going through your body. Um, you get that sweat going and it creates a different kind of mental, um, mental glasses that you start looking at things through. And I start smiling really like when I'm hiking, I'm happy. Maybe like we're hiking down to the river and back up and blah, blah. But when I'm running, get about halfway through the run or a couple miles in the run. And all of a sudden I've got like this little smirk on my face. 
and because I'm tired and uh, and you know probably because you're going downhill on the uphill. Uh, you might yeah, not very true. Much. This is all <laughs> basically downhill. I do not run uphill. I did actually race two young kids the last. A uh, mile and a half up Bright Angel Ooh, nice. one time. Yeah, and I beat those little whippersnappers too. <laughs> but she did. No, so. that's a good point though. I think in um, our last podcast about Zoroaster, when we were talking about why we do this crazy stuff, um, my answer is definitely about like getting to know the canyon and going to these really remote places that um, very few people get to see and just seeing like as many nooks and crannies of the Grand Canyon as you can and just being it's kind of like an intimate experience with the canyon when you're out in the backcountry um, up on summits or off trail and um, you just get this feeling that like you're the only one in there and it's a really special thing and running is different running in the canyon um I would say half or more of my runs have been on the main corridor trails and the others have been on established trails um, maybe a little less traveled but uh, you know, runnable, maintained trails. And for me, that is about running. And it's what you said. Um, and that's not for everyone. So that's why people like your dad are like, why would you do that? <laughs> but if you have that relationship with running, um, then doing it in the canyon is just like one of the best places to get that runner's high. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So what was your first run in the canyon? You know, <laughs> I, I did, didn't prep you with this one. <laughs> I'm trying to think um, like chronologically. I I actually really think that my first run was rim to rim to rim. Mm. As like wow. maybe crazy as that sounds. Um, <laughs> to a lot of people, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I just went for it. Um, this is unimportant, but there was one other run I did um, two ribbon falls and back up. So that's, you know, on your way up to the north rim, but not quite all the way I can't remember the order of that but I really think that rim to rim to rim was my first run Jesus that's a big one yeah holy cow well have you had you at that point done a lot of hiking in the canyon already I've done a lot of hiking uh -huh. um I used to drive up from Tucson when I lived there I'd leave at like three or four in the morning drive straight to the canyon and then um hike down South Kaibab to the river and hike back up Bright Angel and I was speed hiking you know, I was going as fast as I could. Um, it's like, you know, five hours for that trip or something. Um, but I don't think that I was wearing a hydration vest. I wasn't going at it with the intention of running. Um, and I had done a few big backpacking trips before Rim to Rim to Rim. I actually backpacked Rim to Rim to Rim um, unplanned before I ran it. Unplanned? Yeah, we had permits for Cottonwood. And then my friend was like, should we just go all the way to the North Rim? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that's still that's still a ways. Yeah. Conway's yeah, not near the rim. I know, Andres, that was your bright idea. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Andres? <laughs> I don't uh, know you yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were on our way. We wanted to camp down at Phantom and didn't get permits, so we were on our way to Cottonwood, and he was like, should we just go do rim to rim to rim? And um, I was like, I think that people usually plan a little more for that. <laughs> but we did it anyway, but we were just, we were hiking and... Um, definitely weren't doing it for time honestly I think that it's harder to do as a backpack because of the weight factor uh, it's a lot of miles on your feet and then you're um, carrying weight for all or most of it yeah um, so I think running is actually logistically easier yeah that's I mean that's that's such a point that we could dig in further if we wanted to maybe not <clears throat> this episode but that's the same with Zoraster right like doing it in a day versus carrying all your camping stuff um, down there you know it's kind of that same thing like you could take it slower but you're taking it heavier mm -hmm. it's kind of like a you know oh kind of like turtle or tortoise uh tortoise in the hair yeah yeah turtle and the rabbit <laughs> it's like the turtle and the rabbit <laughs> um that hair is like you know skinny and not doesn't have anything and just like taken off whereas a tortoise has a big old shell on his back i don't know anyway <laughs> so um do you want so, me to talk about my first room term term um, running the yeah. running of it. I'll yeah, I'll do it quick. Sure. Well, um, <laughs> do it. that's so, what this is about. Yeah. Uh, when I decided I wanted to do rim to rim to rim, I was part of a Facebook group. Um, I think it was just Grand Canyon running or Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim. So I went on there, uh, threw it out that I was going on a specific date, 
and wanted to leave from South Kaibab, you know, around 4 a.m., 5 a.m., I can't uh, remember exactly. So I wanted to find some folks to carpool with. Uh, there's a shuttle that you can take from the Bright Angel parking lot to the South Kaibab trailhead. Um, so then if you're finishing up Bright Angel, you're right at your car. You don't have to get on a park shuttle. Um, so that's to me the the preferable way to do rim to rim to rim. But, and I'm giving you like this question, look, what, so, but you have to catch that for a shuttle. So what time is the first shuttle Oh, leave? so yeah, so there's an actual shuttle that goes to South Kaiba, but you can take, I guess I misspoke. A taxi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I was going to say, because I didn't think, you said four in the morning, and I don't oh, think yeah, the yeah. shuttle... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I used the wrong word. So you take a taxi service that's just for the canyon. Um, they're super quick. It's like $15 for a ride. Is it 15 Yeah, it's 15 Okay. But then if you have more people, it's a little cheaper. They might charge like 20 for, you know, three people or four people, but then you split it. I, I swear to you, I looked at a, at a website today because I was kind of looking at some logistics. Because I've never done that. I've never taken the taxi. They said $48. Oh, no, no, no. 15 I mean, unless they okay. raised the rates like within the last year. No, I think this was an old website too. Oh. I think this person messed up. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. they hit the four instead of the one possibly. <laughs> so, okay. It's cheap. But I still didn't want to pay $15 because I'm... Cheap. Really cheap. <laughs> cheap, 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 uh, cheap. So I linked up with some guys from Phoenix who were planning to run rim to rim to rim, and one of them was Peter Mortimer. Hey, who is, yeah, now What's a up, friend. Peter? Hey, Peter, and now uh, no longer a Phoenician. But what do you guys call yourselves up here? Flag. Uh, I like I like flag Stefarian. Flag Stefarian. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Peter, you are a flag Stefarian now. Yeah, yeah and, and just a badass runner. Yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> he's 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 crazy. He caught the bug and just like got overtaken. Um, and and only, I don't really know him that well at all. Really, I met him I think once at Whiskey Basin, um, because he didn't come to the hash run that I was that I went to. But uh, if you want to, I'm just gonna plug. If you want to hear his story. Yeah. Um, and he's not even from Arizona. He's from the UK. UK mm -hmm. Is that what you would say? Or Britain yeah. or UK? I don't know. What a, <laughs> England. Across there's like the pond. five names. Yeah, <laughs> across the pond. Um, there's a podcast. Oh, crap. I'm going to have to insert it editing wise. What's the name of the podcast that he just was on? We Run. We Run Far. No, that's I Run Far. I don't know. It's based out of Phoenix. Um, I'll plug it in and edit right here. And uh, it's it's pretty cool. He, he seems he's just a great guy. Um, seems super down to earth, but yet not down to earth because he's he kills it. Yeah, he's on another level. Yeah. We've done um, like easy runs together. He's like, oh yeah, I, I ran 15 miles earlier today. We'll just do like a chill run, and I'm like <laughs> gasping for breath the entire time. So I don't <laughs> run with him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Peter. Um, yeah. yeah, so that was cool. I took the taxi with Peter and two of his friends. Um, I ended up actually running with them, with his two friends, down South Kaibab because my headlamp um, died. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> shocking, I know. Um, and I think I had either a spare headlamp or extra batteries, but they were both dead too. Oh. So I luckily... Um, caught up to these guys and I just stayed on their heels the whole way down South Kaibab to use their <laughs> lights. So that was really great. Um, yeah, so started in the dark, which is usually what you need to do um, doing such a long day. Um, another time I did rim to rim to rim, I started at midnight, so did the whole South Rim to North Rim in wow. the dark. Holy yeah. Cow. Yeah. Um, so that was my, my first time. Um, I remember getting up to the North Rim a lot quicker than I expected myself to <laughs> and just thinking like, oh, hell yeah, like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna finish this thing oh. and like finish it in a pretty respectable time. So I was stoked. I thought, I, I didn't know how I was gonna feel when I got up to the North Rim. I thought I might be hurting. Um, and all in all, I felt pretty dang good. So ran down North Kaibab. Um, my biggest struggle of the day was the heat because I just, I mean, I lived in the desert for seven years and I still hated the heat. So um, it was warm down at the bottom and full sun. So that was a little rugged, um, but I was able to finish in um, 14 hours on the dot. Your first time? Yeah. Oh, wow. On the dot. I was like running at the end because I didn't want it to go over 14. <laughs> <laughs> but you hit 14. Yeah. Were you, honestly though, were you running for sub 14? 
Or, um, or that's a great. Like, I mean, I can't remember the <laughs> <laughs> time on my watch, but I know it was not a second over fourteen hours. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a great time for a. Fir- that's a great time for any run, let alone your first time. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good I was job. happy with it. High thanks. Five. Hey, thanks. Way to go, brat. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about maybe a little bit later, but you've definitely improved upon that. Yes. Um, so, oh, uh, we run the desert mm. is the name of the podcast. And, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of a, a shout out to Peter, but also to Rory, uh, who is involved or I don't know, has a part to do with that or something like that. But oh yeah, my first run in Grand Canyon, I don't remember. I don't remember what the first <laughs> run was. It was down South Kaibab for sure. Um, or no, it wasn't rim trail. I think it was down South Kaibab and then basically like power hike back up South Kaibab. So that was exciting. And it probably took me 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Same amount of time as your rim to rim to rim. Um, no, didn't take me that long. Um, yeah. Yeah. Running down South Kaibab was the, the thing that I did the most for a while, uh, that and rim trail, but running down South Kaibab's rough. Oh yeah. There's so many big drops Yeah. or like not drops, but like, like you're, Stairs, basically. Kind of call, yeah, stairs, is that a good word? If you've been on the South Kaibab at all, you know what we're talking about. But it's just like, da-dunk, 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 mm-hmm. da-dunk, da-dunk. So, but it's definitely run Cool. Cool. Uh, well, I wanted to get some, we had a couple questions from the yeah. other the other uh, Canyon Brats out there. <laughs> uh, this one is from, well, this one is actually from a our guest in the last episode, Casey Bauer. And he asked quite a few questions, but... <laughs> Uh, this one for a, a runner curious young man that Casey he is he is a very curious <laughs> young man <laughs> curious young man an inquisitive fellow inquisitive whoa SAT word <laughs> um, for a runner in the canyon is it common to still walk the steeper sections I can immediately say yes for me yes <laughs> I, I think for most people who say they've done a run in the canyon mm-hmm. are power hiking up yeah. Uh, there are exceptions. Yeah. You know, like the kick-ass crazy runners, like any of the Coconino Cowboys mm-hmm. or like the Vargos, I know. Um, <clears throat> those two that we saw on, from Zoraster. That were, <laughs> there's definitely people that are running up. Yeah. But would you agree that a majority of people that run the canyon power hike up? Yeah. 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 I mean, I would call myself like a pretty average runner and I'm definitely hiking up um, several miles Uh, so just as to give people an idea when I run rim trim trim I run down the entire South Kaibab trail run across um, so through Phantom Ranch and then you get on the North Kaibab trail and it's pretty flat for several miles so I run about eight more miles um, past Ah. Cottonwood I think Cottonwood's about seven miles past Phantom Ranch, and oh. you can still, it's still pretty flat a mile after Cottonwood. So I really run um, as far as I can, pretty much to Manzanita, um, which is a water station on the North Rim. And then I start hiking. And even um, the next few miles, they're a runnable section. So anywhere that the trail flattens out just for a few hundred yards, I'll run it just to make up time. Um, and then get to the top, turn around, run down all of North Kaibab across, and then I usually run the first four and a half miles up Bright Angel to Indian Gardens and then hike. Really? Yeah. And I mean, I if I'm real tired or out of breath or there's a particularly steep section for, you know, 50 feet, then I'll hike a little. But I try to push myself on those sections. Yeah, because there's some, there's some, to me, it seems like there's some steeper areas near like Garden Creek. Like when you're coming up out of there, there's some switchbacks there that are pretty steep. Oh, yeah. Between Garden Creek and Indian Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But uh, no, I'm just saying like that's impressive. Um, do you, do you think that Manzanita, that you kind of stop your running there <clears throat> because it is a water station? And by stopping to get water, your brain changes? <laughs> no, I um, I don't always get water at that water oh. station because you have to go off trail a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I I mean... A little bit. The last two times I've done Rim Trim Trim, particularly my last time, I was really going for time. So I was trying to shave off minutes or even seconds wherever I could. 
So I was choosing the water stations or the bathrooms that were the closest to the trail, hmm. um, if I could. You know, I was trying to not stop for water really at all. I know I got it at the North Rim. Um, I probably, I maybe got, um, what's that? Is there a spout on the, I can't remember. Is there at the a spout the at the top mm-hmm. of the North Okay, yeah. I know there's a It's not always on, obviously. Yeah, but, oh true. Yeah. So that's a logistic we can talk about. Yeah. Um, should we get into logistics? Yeah. Let's talk about, oh, the questions. Oh, so Casey Bauer's question, whoops. Um, <laughs> that was one. So yes, um, walking the, or power power hiking, I mean walking. I, I would still try to maintain like at the slowest a 20 minute mile pace. Okay, up the steeper sections. I was in much better shape last year. I don't think I could do that now. Yeah, really? I don't know. Yeah. I turned 30, I'm slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be a thing on every single episode. <laughs> no. Yeah. Talk to Alicia Vargo. <laughs> True. She's killing it. Uh, what's an average time to the river and back for you when running? I couldn't think of what my answer for that was. For I me. think five hours. Yeah? Or less. Four and a half. Five hours. I haven't done that loop, the cowboy loop, in so long. Um, primarily because I don't like crowds. So really the only times that I choose to be on the corridor trails um, running is for rim to rim to rim. Yeah. So that's a great question. I don't know what it would be. I've done it a lot of times, but I never remember how fast I do it. I'm going to take five hours. How much, okay, how about this question? How long does it take you to get from to get down to the river on the South Kaibab? A little over two hours. Well, running? Two hours? Two and less than two hours? I think you're doing way better than that. An hour I 45? Know. I don't know. I'm asking you. But <laughs> oh, you're right. Because I feel I'm like when we surprised. backpack, it's like a little over two hours. Barely. Yeah. I think you can f- freaking get down there in an hour. But... I have an awful memory. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I can we only remember check. so many hour yeah. or time stamps. And... If you use Strava, you could check it. But... True. Uh, all right. Uh, also, what do you carry with you? Hydration pack, just a water bottle, poles, just meat and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> What do you carry with you? I use a hydration vest. I have an ultimate direction vest um, that holds a one and a half liter bladder in the back. And then it has two pockets in the front for um, collapsible water bottles, the real little ones. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I'm doing something like rim to rim to rim that's 45 miles, or if I'm doing a 50 mile race, um, I typically have at least one water bottle or two in those front pouches and um, my system is I keep water in my bladder and electrolytes like noon in my two bottles on my chest Hmm. Um, and a windbreaker um, and snacks those are really the main things I bring I don't use poles no I never have no would yeah do you think it would hinder you yes oh okay (laughs) an astounding yes (laughs) Cool. Yeah, I go for, I guess if I'm running, I have an ultimate direction as well. Um, the Anton Kaperchka from years, years, years ago. Um, and I would do, for me, I would actually just do my windbreaker in the back. I don't do a bladder and do mm-hmm. bottles. Uh, I kind of went back and forth. There was a time when I was running with just handhelds. Oh. That's it. Um, I liked it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Just and then some... my ultimate direction vest is so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a question. I'll jump to another question that we had uh, from. I have to remember the name. It is from Matt, uh, and then that's all it says. Matt. <laughs> I think Matt. Matt go go ins go ins. Sorry, Matt. Um, but his question was, uh, what's the best hydration? or backpack, hydration slash backpack, for an 18-hour run slash hike uh, for first-timers? That's that's a hard question to answer with the canyon because there's, I think, because there's so many different um, experiences that can happen in 18 hours. So if he, I feel like he's talking about possibly a rim to rim to rim, a double cross. Mm-hmm. 18 hours seems like that could be what they're talking about, yeah. right? So... My humble suggestion, not having done that, but definitely having spent 18 hours in the canyon, if it depends, if you are going to have water accessible, then a hydration vest, 
as long as you can keep that nutrition. 18 hours is a long time for nutrition. You need food. Um, yeah, I think you need a vest for sure, unless you're Jim Walmsley and you're doing it in seven oh, I, hours. Oh, I wasn't saying anything less than a vest. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm saying I on the light I would not side. say backpack if you're planning on running. Um, backpacks are so uncomfortable to run in. And um, you just need mm -hmm. to find the right hydration vest that fits your body. It's kind of like buying a backpacking pack. Um, if it's comfortable, I mean, it becomes part of you. You know, you don't even notice you have it on. And um, you just kind of need to go to an outdoor store and try on a few. Um, my hydration vest holds a lot. I used yours the last time I ran in the canyon. Um, and it was just a, you know, 17 mile day. So I didn't need that much. Um, <laughs> so it worked great, but mine has a bunch of big pockets for extra layers. Um, and some of this is going to be dependent on when you run. Um, however, in the Canyon, this is my opinion, but I think for a long run, like rim to rim to rim, it's like a give and take with the season. So if you're running, um, during some of the warmer months, you're not going to need layers. You know, you don't need a winter hat and gloves and a long sleeve shirt. Um, but you need a lot of water, even though there are water stations that are open, you just don't want to put yourself in a position where you're running out of water or electrolytes when it's warm. Um, and then if you're running on kind of like the outside of the season, um, like right now, November, late November, um, you're definitely going to need some layers and expect snow and different weather conditions. So I think you need a bigger vest that um, has a lot of compartments. Yeah, and you're going to run into the fact that some of the water stations are shut off in the yeah. winter. So you're going to have to carry more water than you would. Yeah. Well, maybe not more water than you would, but you're definitely going to need to carry water. Yeah, and I'll just give a piece of advice about that before I forget. Um, so the Grand Canyon season for the North Rim is um, May 15th is when they open and then they close November 15th. So theoretically, the water station up at the top of the North Rim is turned off um, between those times, but I've run many a time when it's actually um, still on um, in the off season, as are a number of the water stations on the North Kaibab Trail. So the best thing to do if you're a first time or doing rim trim trim and you're worried about hydration is to join one of those Facebook groups because there are folks running the canyon every week, if not every day, um, and posting, you know, which water stations are on. Um, so I, I would say like safe bet is just assume quite a few on the North Rim will be off, but just contact a few people, do a little bit of research from um, folks that have been in the canyon because I've been pleasantly surprised more than once at how many water stations are still on in the winter. Hmm. Well, the park service posts that as well. And I would, I would be sure, I don't know. I think the most accurate um, posting from the Park Service is the sign that's down at Phantom Ranch, but at that point, you're already in there. <laughs> well, online. It's still helpful. Oh, online. online. Eh. In those groups, someone could say, yeah, it's still on, and then you get there and it's not on. So, that's my I don't opinion. Know. Always be safe. Yeah. Like, make sure that you can make it out if all the water was shut off. So, that's why I, I usually bring iodine tablets just in case. Because then the river's going to be there, mm -hmm. <clears throat> depending on your route. The river's going to be there and stuff. So, yeah, so water is, is a huge thing. So, so Matt, I would say, uh, yeah, I would agree. Find a hydration vest. It just fits the body better. You're going to be more comfortable. Even if you're, you said run slash hike, even if it's run slash hike, if there's any kind of fast pace that you're trying to achieve, yeah, it's going to be better. Because I've run with my flash pack before a lot. Yeah. And it's, it bounces. It's not great at all it's not super fun but yeah sweet would you say ultimate direction you're happy with yours oh yeah yeah i've always exactly. been happy with my ultimate direction as well i mean solomon if you can afford it i guess like oh, are they more expensive everyone raves about those mm. well the ones i've seen like killian wares and all that so yeah yeah um cool uh and then there was just one comment from uh actually one of our beer our canyon beer donators andy he said, uh, he just said three words. He said, save your quads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is absolutely true. If you have a long day ahead of you, you can feel so good running down South Kaibab that all of a sudden you're just banging down that trail and you've just 
yeah, destroyed your quads. And um, yeah, the way up can be pretty gnarly um, if you don't, I don't know. There's definitely techniques, you know, being lighter, you know, using your skeleton more, using your joints more. Um, but you can, yeah, you can bang out your quads pretty, pretty yeah, easily. I, south I don't bomb down South Kaiba, but I'm pretty bad at running downhill, <laughs> um, which is maybe a good thing though for Rim Trim Trim. Once I get to the um, kind of the hiking section, the steep part of North Kaiba, I'm ready to go up. Going down is hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, some logistics. We just talked about water. I think we did pretty decent on that. If you're going to run some of these, uh, we'll get into it when we talk about some other routes that aren't the corridor routes. So when we say corridor routes, we're talking about South Kaibab, North Kaibab, and Bright Angel. Those are the main corridor routes. And I think 90% of people who are trying to do rim to rim to rim, uh, also known as a double crossing, are going down South Kaibab. You have to go up North Kaibab and then you're returning up Bright Angel. That's kind of like the given route, right? I mean, that's the fastest known time route. That's what everyone goes, oh no, no, up South Kaibab is the fastest known time. So what is the draw for Bright Angel is water? Yeah, I think that that's for more of like your average Joe runner like me. <laughs> I initially went up Bright Angel because um, it's a little less steep, a little. <laughs> There's still some steep parts. Um, and yeah, you have water every mile and a half the whole way up. Um, and there are a couple water stations that turn off in like the dead of winter, but they're basically on. Um, they're off now. Well, it's winter. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought dead of winter was like <laughs> January, February. Anyways, but you're going to have water um, on your way up. South Kaibab has none. Um, so I guess that's part of it. And then um, now that I'm kind of going for time and like beating my own record, it seems like cheating to shave off three miles going up South Kaibab. <laughs> so maybe at some point I'll do SK, NK, SK <laughs> and try to set records on that. But So once you've established that, you kind of, yeah, it's that challenge of beating your own time. <laughs> you want to do the same thing. Yeah, and, and honestly, like room to room to room, if, if it's your first time in the canyon or your first time on the North Rim, it is gorgeous. It's a beautiful run. The North Kaibab Trail is amazing. But if you've been in there on Bright Angel and South Kaibab as many times as I have, it's a little boring. So, like, switching it up and going up a different trail is kind of nice. Blasphemy. I know. Sorry. Yeah. Um, some other logistics. Um, food. So, not just running rim to rim. I know there's kind of been a rim to rim to rim talk. Um, but running... Um, do you tend to lean more towards, so, okay, let me start this way. When we go for backpacking trips, uh, you know, where we're hiking with heavy packs and, you know, going multiple days, I think me and you and probably a lot of people tend towards, towards real food, um, like wraps and sandwiches and bags of chips and carrots and hummus and bananas and all that. Um, when you run, do you pull that back to more like gels and that kind of thing? No. No? <laughs> I hate gels. I, yeah. yeah, I think I overdid it with gels when I was young and running a bunch of marathons. Um, and they just, the idea of eating a gel makes me feel sick. So mm. I still eat real food on rim to rim to rims. Um, it feels better for me. Yeah. Um, and the sugar just messes with my stomach. Um, so yeah, I still do real food. That's why I have a big hydration vest to fit huh. all of it. Um, I would say the number one thing um, for everyone is electrolytes and or salt. Um, whether that's coming from tablets like noon or from food, from salty foods, you definitely need to manage your salt intake and not just do water. <laughs> Does this have salt in it? <laughs> no. no, no beer salt, unless it's a gosa. Um, okay. Cool. So that's that's when I I think I've gone more that way now the last like five years or so. But before that, when I was doing canyons and running, I don't know. It was just a thing. I just had gels, you know, and I hate I didn't like them either. But like I would just do it. Actually, you know what I did probably more of was tailwind. Um, mm -hmm. I would have my nutrition and electrolytes in my bottle. <clears throat> so I had I, when I said that I used to use two handhelds. I would have one that was my water and I had a bottle specifically that I put ma uh, marker Sharpie on that was always going to be my tailwind.
bottle. Um, actually, I th that did great for me. Um, both my 50Ks, I ran that way with two handhelds. I know you don't like handheld the handheld thing, but um, yeah, that was great for me, and I think Tailwind w did well with my stomach and stuff, so mm. that might be something to think about. Um, liquid nutrition, it definitely absorbs faster. I would say this is like advice I would have for any race or any long run, like rim to rim to rim, just don't do anything new. If you never use goos, don't use them on rim to rim to rim. You know, if you're if you're a goo person, do it, but just don't change. Or goo it. <laughs> just goo it. Don't change oh. your normal thing. Yeah. Don't upset your tummy. True, but try it on other things. Yeah. Um, no, you don't want to upset stomach in Grand Canyon. That's not a good place to have. Upsets. I mean, nowhere is, no. but yeah. Yeah, cool. I want to get into the routes. Uh, let's talk about routes. Yep. Uh, because we've been talking about the corridor trails, but one of the main things I think I wanted people to get, even though it's 45 minutes into the podcast or so, uh, is, and, and you said this too, you want, we want to tell people about getting away from those corridor routes. And I know exactly what people think when they're like, you can't run if it's not the corridor route, because I thought that as well I thought they're too steep they're too rocky they're not maintained um, but if you're a trail runner they're absolutely doable they're so beautiful and there are no people <laughs> well after <laughs> this podcast yeah, yeah, because no one listens to this podcast <laughs> <laughs> um, actually people do listen to this podcast so we should give a shout out right now to Emily from hey the, Emily from the climbing gym who said she uh, listened to the podcast or actually watched it because it was a live episode and uh, even suggested it to one of her friends. And so, woo, woo, woo. woo. yeah, Canyon Brat's out there. <laughs> um, there's a lot of us out there, I think, and we're passionate, so that's cool. Uh, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, getting people off the corridor. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, and we were at the climbing gym and we were talking with Jason Henry, and I asked him because he's been running the canyon for a long time, like, long long time and I asked him any kind of question that he had or suggestion really or comment and really the only thing he said was exactly that he's like he want he would like to tell people to get off of the corridor trails mm -hmm. so uh you want to go first with one that you want to talk about um well I just ran hermit trail um this past weekend and that's a beautiful trail to run. Um, if you've hiked the Hermit Trail, again, you're probably like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it's so steep. I remember the first time I hiked Hermit was with my mom. It was my first visit to the Grand Canyon ever when I was like 18. And we went down to uh, Santa Maria Spring. Is that what it's called? Uh, the first little rest oh, house. Dripping Springs. Oh, mm -mm. The, that goes way to the left. Yeah, I think it's called Santa yes, Maria yes, Spring. Yes, you're, right, you're right. It's about two and a half miles down. Yeah, that's a steep two and a half miles yeah. um but then honestly right after that rest house it is just beautiful traversing trail um pretty much no incline at all there are tiny little tiny little hills maybe you have <laughs> to walk a hand like three times tops um for miles and yeah like i said there there are really no people out there the trail is not rocky it's just packed dirt. It's beautiful. Um, so that was a really enjoyable run. I took mm. it down to Hermit Creek. Um, there's a campground down there and a little set of, um, I guess I'd call them narrows and water. Um, so there's no water on the trail, you know, no water spigots, um, but you can fill up in Hermit Creek if you um, have a filter or iodine tablets. So that's a great trail to run. Highly recommend Hermit. Yeah, and that's how many miles? Um, to Hermit Creek and back up, it's uh, 16 and a half, 17-ish. Huh. Yeah, that's okay. with some exploration down in Hermit Creek. Okay. Yeah, because then if you want something a little bit longer and you want a loop, <clears throat> or well, kind of a loop with a shuttle, then you can go down Hermit, across Tonto, and up Bright Angel. And I've done that as a as a hike, as a as a day. Well, it was the middle of the night, but as a one go hike, and that would be great because that Tonto section, most of Tonto is great because it's flat. It's more like rolling kind of hills through scrub, but that one is is really good too. You're weaving in and out of Horn Creek and Salt Creek, 
um, or Canyon, sorry, Horn Can no Horn Creek and Salt Creek. Um, and so you go down Hermit and instead of going to Hermit Creek, like you said, you'll get, you'll go to the Tonto and you'll get to Monument Creek, which is a campsite and a great spot to stop awesome. and camp. campsite. Yeah. You pass through there. It's kind of not straightforward to find the Tonto on the other side of Monument. I had troubles. I've done it twice. Um, and, but then you're on the Tonto and you go and so that's a 25 mile from oh, Hermit Trailhead great. to Bright Angel Trailhead. You do need to be able to get back. So it, that depends on your timing. If you're at You can take the can or the park shuttle. That's easily. what I mean. Well, timing wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause if you do it and all of a sudden you're up there and it's like 10 o'clock at night, then you're stuck there. So you have to know how call long taxi. it- taxi. You know, call a taxi. Yeah. That's something I never even really knew about um, was a taxi. But um, yeah, you can do that, or you can take the, the shuttle first, which is, that's way better. Actually, now that I'm thinking that, that's like the only real way you should ever do it. Leave your car at Bright Angel, take the shuttle um, to Hermit's Rest, and then start it. Um, so that's a great, great 25 mile route. It's a lot of miles, but um, it's good. I'm and adding it to my list. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, good. Yeah. I could do that with you. I mean, if you would, you know, wait for me at some point. I told you I'm slow now. I'm old. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, a good route. What's another good route? Um, so same start going down Hermit and running the Butcher. How, is that how you pronounce it? Sure. Butcher? <laughs> how do you say it? I don't know. Butcher. Butcher trail. That's a, a real flat Boucher. runnable. Bobby Boucher. <laughs> runnable trail. Um, Jason mentioned doing it as a loop, huh? Yeah. I can't remember what he said. I just did it as an out and back um, to do a summit. But that's a beautiful running trail, really remote. And I just, yeah. it's another spot where I'm like, why isn't anybody else out here? This is like <laughs> one of the best runs in the canyon I've ever done. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another one I like, I've, the one I've run the most is, it's corridor-ish. I mean, it is corridor, but... Well, now it sounds weird even mentioning it because it's corridor. We're talking about off route, but uh, down South Kaibab, across Tonto, and up Bright Angel, mm. and that's one that I think, is, if you don't want to go all the way to the river and have to climb all the way back out Bright Angel, <clears throat> and you want like kind of in a sense like less people, you don't get to go to the river, but uh, doing that route is I think it's great, and it's uh, twelve I think twelve miles. Um, 13 miles, yeah, and it splits it perfectly. It's like four and a half down, four and a half across, four and a half up, mm -hmm. um, and I just love that one. I like doing that one at night as like a hike slash- Full if you moon run. run. Full, if you have a good full moon, the Tonto is yeah. definitely runnable at night. Um, I mean, even with a good headlamp, you can do it at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one of the times I did that, I've got a story that I'll tell some other time with a mountain lion, <laughs> um, but. Um, you know, one trail I haven't run, but would be a great running trail is Clear Creek. We've hiked it a number yeah. of times um, as part of big backpacking trips, but that trail is super flat and just traverses along above the river be for miles so and nice. miles and miles and miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want a long run and don't want to do all the climbing that's involved with rim to rim to rim, that's a great option to just get some big miles in in the canyon. It'd be less than a, than a double crossing. Right? Going all the way to the campground and back? Yeah, because yeah, the campground from Phantom is eight miles, isn't it? Or is it 10? No, it's eight. 10. Is it 10? I think so. Either way, that's less. 20. It's not 14, because it's 14 up to the north. So 34 right? miles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree that would be a great, once you, you get down to Phantom, you do have a steep climb to get up to Clear Creek, but once you're up there, then boom, you're just flying and you can see the river the whole time mm -hmm. down the right that's really cool so yeah that'd be a fun one to do it's a lot of miles for me that's a 50k yeah yeah um and then i think the last one at least for me for me got the hiccups here with this lumberyard ipa <laughs> um and i know you're not a super fan well you are a fan of this one because of chloe but the rim trail so, yeah, I love the room trail. You can take your dog out. Yes. Well, you've also talked crap about it. But, <laughs> um, the rim trail is along the rim, the the south rim. It's just, 
uh, I don't know. It's well, it goes from South Kaibab all the way to Hermit. But the section I like is the section that follows Hermit Road. If you park at Bright Angel, you can do so many different things with this trail because of the shuttle. There are nine stops from Bright Angel to Hermit, shuttle stops. So what you can do is you can decide how many miles do I wanna run with a view of the canyon today? Do I wanna run two miles? Do I wanna run six miles? Do I wanna run 14 miles? Um, because it's what seven and a half I think it's seven and a half it's about seven yeah seven seven and a half miles from Bright Angel to Hermit so if you want to run 14 you just run the whole thing if you want to run seven miles you take the shuttle to the end and you run back if oh you that'd want... be great it's a lot of downhill on so the that's way what back. I love I love that seven mile run I've I've left from here in the morning done that run and come back home before just for the run for the seven miles mm -hmm. of slightly downhill it is yeah you, you you get off at hermit and you start running the rim trail and it's just this slight gradual downhill now it is mostly concrete you know it's funny i was gonna say the thing that's cool about it is you expect it to be all concrete but you can get off the pavement a lot and um actually run in the dirt or like you, packed gravel at least yeah, it's, there's about two and a half miles of it that is not paved. Um, but it does seem like there's more kind of like little side sections you yeah, can take. Yeah, there are a lot. <clears throat> there's one section that you have to be careful of. You can either hop up on the road and go past it, or you can do this like almost like trapeze artist. Or not trapeze artist. Yeah, you swing on this thing. <laughs> I was like, where is this? Um, oh, Tightrope right. almost like along this edge. Oh, yeah, down Chloe and below. I do that one. Ooh, yeah. Chloe? Yeah, yeah, you know her. A um, yeah, but if you do run the rim trail with your dog, they're not allowed on the shuttle, so just keep that in mind. Mm, it's going to be a mountain back. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I've biked that before. It's cool too. Yeah, as a bike. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like the rim trail. Uh, just you've got a view of the canyon the whole time. So that's what's nice about it. Uh, you'll see a lot of people. There's a ton of people at the stops. At the stops, but not in between. Not many in between. And they're always like, whoa, like they see you running and they're like, you're running, wow. <laughs> we get a lot of attention because Chloe's so adorable. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, yeah, any other routes, 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 rock, ray? Right <laughs> <laughs> I think those are my favorites. Um, I've run New Hands, down New Hands, um, across the Tonto and up Grandview. Oof. It was a little rugged. I think, yeah. honestly, it was just rugged because I was wearing pants and not shorts, and I was mm. miserably hot the whole day. Um, New Hands is rugged. Yeah. It can be. I don't know. Yeah, you and Jason Henry both were talking about, like, running that one. I'm like, that's one of the ones I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so not necessarily a beginner one. Yeah. But, um, I mean, even he was saying Tanner, like, down. Oh, oh that thing's so steep. I'm so scared to run that thing down. But <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, those are some routes. Um, do you have a route that is your bucket list route, like something like you have always thought about running, but haven't yet? I'm thinking. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Actually, yes, yes. So one thing I really want to do with um, a group or like another set of friends is on the North Rim doing the Rainbow Rim Trail. Yeah. Um, I can't, I think the total distance is like over 30 miles, but the idea is to have, um, you know, two sets of two or, you know, one, two sets of one start on either end um, and swap keys along the way or leave the keys of the vehicle so you can do the full stretch of the Rainbow Rim Trail. Um, I know it's a great mountain biking trail. That's really all I know about it. I think you get a pretty good view of the canyon most of the time or you're in the forest. Um, and you can bring your dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's national so forest. It's, yep, it's a bucket list for me and Chloe. Nice. Yeah, there is a decent amount that you're, you're right on the rim. In fact, there's one part of it that goes out on this peninsula, like pretty far out and comes back around. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't remember what the name of the peninsula is, but <clears throat> yeah, I was there for a, for the Grand Canyon um, Ultra from Ultra Adventures. They put put it on, I manned the aid station for for like over 24 hours. 
um, at Lipen Point, not Lipen Point. Lipen Point's on the south rim. I don't know some rim, but cool Rainbow Rim Trail bucket mm-hmm. list. Sweet. I don't. I don't have one. Um, I've definitely got like hikes that um like. Do you want to do really... Rim Trim Trim? I do. I you thought I was gonna do it this fall. Didn't happen, obviously. Um, yeah, maybe spring. I, I need to do it. That So going back to the beginning of this episode, saying I haven't really challenged myself, I'm confident I can do it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. I always feel like I'm not in a position where I'll do well. So for me, it's kind of like Yosemite. I never actually went and climbed in Yosemite because I always thought I'm going to wait till I'm good enough to have a great time. Yeah. Same thing with Rim to Rim to Rim. I'm like, I'm going to wait till I'm like good enough to have like a great time doing yeah. it. But I just need That's why I didn't run it this fall. I know I can't beat my last time. <laughs> uh, I Maybe. Think, I think your your brain is tricked. I think you are in good, if not better, shape. But you've been in Flagstaff at elevation. So Everything's seems... hard here. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, so I need to break 12 hours and 13 minutes. Yeah, 12, 13. Yep. Cool. I believe in you. <laughs> and I believe in all our... Canyon Brat fans out there, all you brats. I uh, hope you guys have had amazing adventures, whether it's hiking or running. If you have had any cool times running in the canyon, uh, let us know. Um, it'd be awesome to have some people talk about it. I'm sure we're going to talk about running in the canyon more than just this episode. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. So, um, um, I have one more question to answer. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, you have two more questions. <laughs> kind of a shout answer. out. True. Um, so one comes from uh, Miss Anna Henderson, yes. and the question is, how did <laughs> can you say it all out without laughing? How did you get so cool? Um, the answer to that is, I learned it all from my baby sister. Oh. I bet she's not even gonna listen. Oh. She's too cool. <laughs> oh, okay. So she's so cool. She's not gonna listen to <laughs> get her answer about why you're so cool. I'll tell her to tune in for the last two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, there's one more question on, on Instagram there. Uh, Chloe Bug Outdoors asks, yeah. is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Why can't dogs run beneath the rim? <laughs> Great question, Chloe. Um, honestly, I have to say, the canyon's rugged. I wouldn't really want to take my dog down there. No. <laughs> so I'm cool with it. Um, and it's the place I respect the most in the world, so I will respect their rules to not bring dogs beneath the rim that'd be terrible it really would it's too hot down there for them too hot you'd be like constantly i'd be constantly worried about them either running into people or running off you know yeah yeah so sorry chloe it's It's the rim trail for you (laughs) you get ice cream (laughs) at the end oh yes um cool anything else nada sweet well uh thanks again to everyone who's listening in whether you're listening in right now which is november Well, not right now, but like... (laughs) like, are we live? No, we're not. Yeah, we've been live this whole time. Um, November 2019, or if you're listening sometime in the far future, 2020. (laughs) Um, I wonder what the world will be like then. Man, yeah. Hoverboards, maybe? (laughs) If you are a person who has run the canyon uh, one time or a hundred times, why don't you come be a guest and tell us your experience? I would love it. And I'm kind of looking at you. Well, I'm not looking. Well, that'd be creepy if I'm <laughs> looking at them right now. <laughs> uh, I'm talking to you, uh, Alicia Vargo, Alicia Shea Vargo, and uh, Mary Jane. Uh, you guys showed interest, and you guys are rock stars when it comes to running in the canyon. So we would love to have you tell some stories, and supposedly you have some pretty good stories. And Peter, Mr. Peter Mortimer. Oh, yeah, yeah, Peter. Um, I forgot to mention the first time that I ran Rim to Rim to Rim, Peter did the whole thing eating one avocado, a handful of nuts, and a beer at Phantom Ranch. That's his thing. I know. He's, he is super fat. Uh, yeah. He's, not, he's super, he's super fat. What do, you, what do you call it? Super fat uh, adapted. Yeah. There we go. And he Sorry. just did um, Rim to Rim to Rim this past weekend, South Kaibab to North Kaibab to South Kaibab, and beat... Um, he made a personal record for himself. A PR with yeah. snow. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. a lot of and snow. And he still had a beer at Phantom Ranch, he said. Yep, of course he did. A it's PR his nutrition. and Phantom Ranch. <laughs> but that's not... Well, that's that's speed nutrition for him because that's carbohydrates. Yeah. Yeah, it's like getting that booster blast. So, anyway, yeah, Peter, love to talk to you. <laughs> 
Love to talk to anyone who does stuff in the canyon. That's what this is about, Canyon Brats, your one and only Grand Canyon Adventure Podcast. I can pretty much say that. <laughs> I can say that. I just did. Um, yeah, uh, thanks to Greg and Andy for the Canyon beers. If you want to buy us some Canyon beers and get a shout out, and you can give shout outs, doesn't have to be to the Museum of Northern Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can either Venmo Nick Irvin 8 or PayPal. You can uh, send it to paypal.me slash Canyon Brats. Please, if you're listening to this on iTunes, it's really simple and it's going to help a lot. Subscribe, review, and rate our uh, our podcast. So all you got to do is hit the five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Uh, give a couple words in a review, what you like about it, and then subscribe. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to, iTunes is going to be like, oh, check out this cool podcast. People are liking it five stars and they're <laughs> you know reviewing it so so they're going to send it out to more people and it's going to come up in the search better um yeah anyway that'd be great i would love it if you guys would do that <laughs> actually even better do what emily did and share you know just yeah. tell people about it if you know someone who loves the canyon or is going to take a trip in the future you know share a podcast all right am i being too much of a uh <laughs> We've begged enough it out. Yeah. for one of Please, sir, please. may I have some more reviews? Some more <laughs> subscriptions, please, sir. <laughs> right. Everyone stop listening. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Carrie, for uh, you. being an expert, at least in this room. And uh, we will talk to you guys in the next Candy Brats episode. Woo. Woo. What's our tagline? We still don't have a tagline. Let's go do some. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I'm Nick Irvin. I'm Carrie Henderson. Man, let's go do some stupid stuff. Is that it? Let's go do something stupid. Oh. Come on, you know. All right, sorry. Yes, second edit. Okay. Oh, thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Nick Irvin. I'm Carrie Henderson. Now, let's go do something stupid. Yeah.